Minecraft is one of those games that I hold extremely near and dear to my heart. It was the game that represented my childhood, and I probably have more hours in it than any other video game that I've even touched today. Back then, all we had was Minecraft on the Xbox 360. While PC did exist, most of my memories were made through 4J Studios' iteration of the title in split-screen co-op. I didn't have a console of my own, unfortunately, but a lot of my friends did, so there I was, right alongside them, hunting for diamonds, getting villager trades, and even trying to summon Herobrine. And speaking of which, man did that interest translate over to YouTube! I know for many of you who weren't there, you probably look back on this era as ancient history, but to an extent there is something magical about it. Maybe it's just the lenses of nostalgia, but personally, I think it's because the people who, regardless of how they turned out, genuinely wanted to make this content through just passion. At least, for the start. Eventually, YouTube's monetization programs allowed for a lot of creators to rise up and actually turn Minecraft into their full-time job. And as a result of that opportunity, many people were willing to go to extreme lengths of creativity just to try and achieve this new coveted dream job. And one of these video lengths is a series that isn't really around too much today, which is of course, Minecraft in real life. Many different creators tried their hand at it with many different iterations of the style, whether it was trying to make hyper-realistic mobs, textures, or even making fully-fledged movies imitating the feeling of playing Minecraft. Honestly, it was pretty insane, and I was extremely hooked. However, there was one video that I just kept coming back to. A video by Blister Cinema titled Minecraft, The Hunt for Herobrine. If you look at it in hindsight, one might consider a video like this cringy by today's standards, but back then, this was infatuating for a lot of us. The idea of actually being able to play Minecraft in real life and actually find a monster that a lot of us were genuinely scared of ended up infatuating a whole generation to a point that this would receive 32 million views. And for some of us, with me included, we thought it was real. We wished it was real. And we hoped that one day, very far into the future, we could also experience Minecraft in real life. So let's fast forward half a decade later. I was about 13 years old and still in middle school. The creators I idolized had taken their own routes in life. Some not for the best, but for those who stayed on the path of YouTube, they ended up soaring higher than I could ever even imagine. Eventually, even I cracked under my own aspirations and started down a journey that would change my life forever. But before that change could truly happen, I first had to discover it. One day, while me and my father were deciding on something to do, I was looking through Google and found a place that was known as a virtual reality arcade. The business model for this place goes that you pay for a certain amount of time, whether that's 30 minutes or an hour, and you would have freeform access to their virtual reality headsets and game catalog for that alluded time. Keep in mind that this was a time even before the Oculus Quest 1 released, so a freeform factor consumer virtual reality headset was still in the ways of pipe dreams. But me and my dad, being curious enough to virtual reality, decided to check it out. And after just one visit, we were both infatuated. The first game we ever played was a little game called Elven Assassin, where you would defend your castle from an onslaught horde of orcs. We ended up enjoying our experience so much that not too long after, we ended up returning for a second play session. It was during this session that we ended up exploring more of the catalog, trying a multitude of iconic games, from Beat Saber to even Super Hot but the one game that truly changed everything. The thing that changed it from an infatuation to true unbridled passion was when an employee told me that they had Minecraft VR. Hearing that, my ears had immediately perked up as I had recently seen some of my favorite creators also try out VR Minecraft. So I quickly asked the employee to boot up the game for me. And that's when, for the second and last time ever in my life, I experienced playing Minecraft for the first time time. That sense of wonder and curiosity flooded right back into me, a feeling so familiar, yet so new. And this was the closest that I had ever felt to being truly immersed in a virtual reality title. And now we fast forward to today. I'm a senior in high school, about to turn 18 in three months. 
The whole world is about to be thrown at me, and here I am still walking a path started when I was 13. My mind started to wonder and reminisce about 2020, the lockdowns, and the people I met. People long gone who now live their own lives unrelated to me or my interests. The release of that long coveted VR headset known as the Oculus Quest, and the birth of standalone VR. Then I thought even farther back about Minecraft, and realized, oh yeah, Minecraft VR exists. All of a sudden, everything just came rushing back. All of the memories I had from booting up that first world in the VR arcade, the Asatia buy-in that I ended up exploring before eventually getting my own PC and being able to play the game for myself. And if you watch any video essay YouTuber, you probably know this phrase pretty well, which states, Minecraft is a game with near unlimited potential. And considering my recent achievement of virality giving me access to a very broad audience, I think I find it now the perfect time to finally talk about something that I've been itching to say for a while. And now we finally get to talk about it. I think to premise the rest on of what this video is talking about, this will probably have to be done with mods in the Java version, as Bedrock is a bit stingy with their whole marketplace thing. If you remember the video I talked about in the intro, Minecraft The Hunt for Hero Brian is what I personally consider to be the most realistic iteration of Minecraft. And if we dissect that video, there's about 7 major factors that could make single player Minecraft the most immersive it's ever been. In the first, and in my opinion probably the most obvious, we're gonna need some shaders. The only problem with shaders is that they take up a lot of performance, so combining that with virtual reality is going to be very hard. You're either gonna need some shaders that will basically be optimized enough to where they won't take up too much resources on your PC, or Vivecraft itself will need to be optimized enough to where it can actually run with a lot of these mods enabled. And the reason why I say this over telling people to just get a better PC is because, really, not all of us can afford $10,000 battle stations that can run everything with 32 gigabytes of RAM. But anyway, the next factor that goes into it is going to have to be realistic audio. Now, what do I really mean by this? It's really just adding a reverb and a little bit of echo, depending on what location you're in. So, let's say, for example, you're in a cave, and of course, you're probably going to have a little bit of an echo down the cave. Or, let's say you're in an oak forest, you'll probably want to hear the sound of wind rushing through the trees to make the leaves make their, well, iconic sound. I don't really know what it is, maybe it's like shaking or something, I don't know. And not just that, but you also will need ambience. So if you're in a jungle biome, you'll probably want to hear the sounds of parrots and other bugs. Or if you're on the coastline near a beach, you probably want to hear the sounds of some small waves crashing. And then along with that, the third thing we need, which really should just be included in any survival VR game, is the ability to hold weapons with two hands. A big problem with Minecraft is that your character will only hold things with one hand, and so inherently when you play VR, you're also going to be holding things with one hand. But I think if we truly want immersion, we should have the ability to influence some things like an axe with our offhand. Now the fourth thing is regarding textures. For the most part, I actually want these to remain the same. We don't want to be changing the game up to a point that it isn't even Minecraft anymore. There still has to be that native touch where people can actually recognize, oh yeah, no, this lava isn't actually going to kill me. Then the fifth thing that I just really want to quickly include is going to be a mob animation upgrade. I know there's already a bunch of mods that can basically do this, so this part shouldn't really be that hard to come by. Next up after that though, number 6, something that will be absolutely crucial, which will be a combat upgrade. This is having more realistic proportions to how the different weapons are handled, with things such as swords maybe having a little bit of sway to them, and maybe even having the ability to block projectiles such as arrows if done right, and something so major that I literally named it as number 7, which is the ability to parry attacks. So any sorted mob that tries to swing at you with the improved animations, you should be able to swipe at their sword, catch them off guard, and then slay them. All this and more for the single player aspect will probably transform Minecraft into an insane virtual reality experience that could probably accumulate its own audience within the Minecraft space. I mean, could you imagine if the Dream SMP had these kinds of combat physics where people were actually having insane fight sequences instead of just trying to butterfly click each other? I think I could safely say that that would be miles more entertaining. But single player isn't the only way that Minecraft VR can reach its full potential, because Minecraft isn't just a single player game. Another thing we have to majorly focus on is multiplayer. 
Multiplayer, as many of you already know, is an absolute staple of the Minecraft community. With giant servers such as Hypixel and other smaller ones that used to be at the top, such as Mineplex, the community has gone through many different changes as many different servers have had their time in the limelight. And now I think it's time for a new type of server to make it into the mainstream, which is of course, a server for virtual reality. And these servers can be whatever people want them to be. They can be SMP servers or minigame servers. I mean, it's already been proven that while there is a learning curve, minigames such as Bed Wars and Sky Wars translate extremely well over to virtual reality. In fact, a lot of Hypixel minigames translate extremely well over to virtual reality. All someone would need to do is basically make a minigame server that allows for people to basically play these games in virtual reality. But bringing PC games over isn't the only thing you can do. In fact, with the free form movement of virtual reality, you could create even newer games, which, for example, might be like a revamped parkour. And I know for those of you who already have the Vivecraft mod, you would know that Vivecraft has their own server where they basically have a lot of these requests already fulfilled. But if someone can make a server like the Vivecraft one that has enough optimization to where things aren't too laggy, and they use the previous requests made for single player, they could have a completely evolved minigame server that no one has ever seen before in the community. And with that, whoever they are could probably become a millionaire. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be doing a Q&A at 10k, and thanks for watching.